There are several different models that we can use to explain and investigate how bonding actually happens at an electronic level. The simplest method that we can use is the Lewis model. And the Lewis model really boils down to atoms all want to have eight valence electrons. Bonding occurs so that every atom is satisfied or happy with those eight valence electrons. Now, just as a reminder, the number of valence electrons for all of our representative elements can be found by looking at their group number. Everything in group 1a has one valence electron. Everything in group 2a has two valence electrons. 3a has three electrons and so forth. The exception to that is helium. And helium is so small that it only has two electrons, even though it's a noble gas, in group 8a. We're also going to ignore the transition metals for now. They generally have one or two valence electrons, depending on the situation, but they also have some d orbitals being filled, and it gets weird. So we basically are, we'll just ignore those for this discussion. To draw the Lewis structure for a neutral atom, we're just going to put the atomic symbol, and we're going to surround that by dots. Each dot represents a separate valence electron. I tend to draw mine a little bit differently from the way that it's shown in this figure. For example, magnesium, they have drawn with one dot on either side, one to the left and one to the right. Remember when we are filling our orbitals, we're always going to get two s electrons before we start adding any p electrons. So I would tend to say that for magnesium, the structure would have its two dots on the same side because they're paired. They're in an s orbital together. Then for, let's say, aluminum and silicon, I would also have two dots on the same side and one or two on separate sides. I do separate the p electrons, so nitrogen or phosphorus is going to look just like it does in the figure there. For cations and anions that aren't bonded to anything, so just loose ions floating around in a plasma, we need to include the charge on our Lewis structure. And so if I was going to, let's say, write a sodium cation, sodium takes a one plus charge. And when it becomes a cation, it loses its one valence electron. So instead of drawing the new valence shell that has eight electrons in it, we only draw the, the original valence shell, which is now empty. If I had something like calcium, it would be very similar, but calcium has a two plus charge. We put our ions in brackets, usually, it's less important for cations, but it is very important for the anions. Anions, remember, have added electrons. And so if I were to draw the Lewis structure for a bromide ion, that's Br, and it has eight valence electrons. It's picked up one of those valence electrons from some other atom. The brackets here really clarify the fact that all of those eight valence electrons belong to the bromine ion. If we were drawing, let's say, oxygen, it would be the same sort of idea. Oxygen in an ion is still going to have eight valence electrons, but now our charge is two minus. The brackets really become important when we start talking about drawing Lewis structures for ionic compounds. So 
if we have sodium chloride and we want to draw the Lewis structure for that compound, the way that that compound forms is a sodium cation and a chloride anion come close together. And so to draw the Lewis structure, we just draw out our ions close to each other. The anion gets all of the electrons that it needs. It gets its eight valence electrons, and the cation doesn't have any. For something slightly more complicated, like calcium chloride, now we have more than just two ions involved. You'll see these written a few different ways. Uh, I like to put the, the odd atoms, whether that's calcium in this case, or if we had something like sodium oxide, which would be Na2O, then the oxygen would be the odd atom. I like to put that one in the middle just because that seems neater to me, but I'm not going to be super picky about that. So calcium is going to go in the middle, and it has a 2 plus charge. Now, normally I would write this out in a line like you would read it, but I'm a little short on space horizontally, so I'm going to do it vertically. And that, again, just sort of illustrates how it doesn't really matter exactly how you've got things arranged. Now, our chlorine, we'll have one chlorine atom, or ion, here. That has a minus one charge. And our other chlorine atom, I'll just write on the other side of the calcium. It also has a minus charge. So that is how I would go about writing that. Sometimes you'll see like a calcium, some, well, here, let me just show you. Sometimes you'll see something like, oh, sorry, all right, go back. Um, sometimes you'll see something like, Again, it really doesn't matter as long as you've got the right number of each ion and, you know, they're close enough that they look like they go together. 